The Twitter files on free speech depression soon to be published on Twitter itself. The public deserves to know what really happened. This is spicy yeah. as hell, and I love it. And, you know, we'll see what happens. I think that I posted last week something like, you know, Twitter should hold, you know, a series of live press, press conferences to, you know, basically unload the dirty laundry and kind of explain all the skeletons in their closet. So, you know, who knows, maybe you saw this, but I'm, you know, guessing he was going to do this anyway. But this is, you know, this, this is kind of ideal. Yeah, I, I, I guess I'm a little confused as to like, um, you know, what he's going to release. Um, you know, I mean, can he technically release something, you know, that the government sent or, you know, whatever the case is, like the, the dealings they have? I, I don't know. I mean, it's definitely interesting, but I, I was just like, you know, curious as to like, what, what can he release? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, the devil's in the details and, you know, we'll see how much substance there actually is, but I mean, I mean, it's a huge statement. It's better than nothing. It's a huge statement. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, but, but here, but we do have something tangible that happened, which was uh, Twitter ending the COVID-19 misinformation policy, which is something we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. It's like, okay, well, you know, they haven't actually changed the terms yet. And now they have, they basically announced the date to sunset the misinformation like that. So that's, that's game changer. I mean, that's a big deal. Yeah. 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 I mean, Berenson obviously had to go to court and spend a ton of money to get his account back Mm -hmm. from this. There've been other accounts that have been dinged and banned for quote unquote misinformation. I mean, that also means like people like Robert Malone and Peter McCullough would be unbanned. Hopefully I'm assuming. Um, yeah, it's going to be. Yeah, what was the number? A- what, what what was the number you just said? There, everyone over ten thousand followers. Yeah, as I saw something. They were working on accounts. Any account with ten thousand followers or more, uh, unbanning them this week. Um, but mm-hmm. again, that was like I think that was election wizard. Uh, I forgot who the source was. Um, but uh, it wasn't confirmed from Elon or anything. But um, yeah. So, so sounds good. I mean, right. he, Elon did say this week, so this is the freedom week. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, for sure. Yeah. And then, you know, and, and the, the big thing that happened last night, so my wife is not in any of this stuff, like, you know, any, any of the shows that podcasts that I watch, but she was actually really, really excited for last night's show with, uh, Tim and Kanye. Um, and uh, yeah, she actually, it was interesting. We actually were listening together for once, but it was, it was uh, an electrifying 27 minutes of uh, Tim Cass IRL. What, what'd you think, Bill? I mean, it was sad to see how little he could handle an actual conversation. I think it's just yeah. a, it's just such a bad look on his presidency. And, you know, I think that walking on eggshells around celebrities is just not cool. And I, I look, a lot of people were upset with him because they think that he wasn't you know, necessarily like navigating it sensitively enough, but like, get over it. I mean, it's, it's, it's his show, you know, he wants people to act as peers, even look, it doesn't matter who's more famous. Plenty of famous people have had the realization that you can still be a humble person, which Kanye isn't. So, you know, the fact that like him art and style wasn't vibing with Kanye, it's like, that's Kanye's loss. He had a huge opportunity with a huge audience. And it's just not presidential at all. So, um, yeah, I don't know what else yeah, to I, say about it. I, I, yeah. yeah, I agree. I It was interesting, like, because Kanye was complaining during the interview that he wasn't getting a chance to speak. But he actually spoke for, like, the majority of the time, really. Like, Tim and his team really only got a couple questions and um before before he left and you know, there are some people out there that think that maybe this was a setup, maybe Milo and fuentes and and kanye had the strategy going in that they were going to walk out um there's that going around um 
there's some people that are saying, oh, they're trying to make Trump look bad, which I don't know, you know, if I if I buy into that one as much. But um, it was definitely a, a huge show, um, but it it lends to the credibility and the and the need for a conversation. Um, I'm I think the biggest surprise for me is the fact that YouTube didn't shut it down immediately. Um, mm. That was my bet. I was betting on that uh, happening. Um so I thought that was very interesting. Um, but yeah, yeah. You know, walking out. I yeah. I don't, I, I, I mean, look, does Milo have some plan, you know, to get back at Trump and, you know, Republicans, like who knows? Um, I, I doubt that Milo planned the blow up. It definitely seemed like that was in Kanye's control. Yeah. and that he just didn't want to be there like just like all these little threats oh i'm gonna leave if this is another yeah. lex Fridman. like dude that was you know one of the better podcasts you've done and it wasn't even that good because you were still kind of a baby um but i, I, just, I would love i would love to see a humble kanye because you know i i am a fan of a lot of kanye stuff and it's just sad it's like because he's giving he's not giving anyone anything to hang on to he's just kind of degrading into identity politics and tribes and you know their whole point about oh well it's okay to say white people but it's not okay to you know uh talk about jews like that is not an intellectually stimulating point and it's also just like this whole eye for an eye mentality. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you do it, so I should do it. Well, how about no one does it? And how about right. you just talk about issues and, you know, convince people to hop on board with you? Like, you're not, he, it's like he's not even taking himself seriously as a candidate. He's slouching in the chair. He seems so, like, low energy and, like, just, like, lazy. He, he seems lazy to me. Maybe he needs to like work out or something. I don't know what his deal is, but he just like the way that he was slumped and like sassy. Blah. Yeah. And yeah, I, I mean, and he did, you know, he did run in the last presidential election as well, you know? Um, so this is like nothing new um, as far as him running, but yeah, I agree. I mean, you have to be able to have a difficult conversation if that's the office that you're aspiring to. Um yeah. And, you know, the the one thing about Kanye is his brilliance in marketing. And he is uh, he's a, he's you know, he gets it. He, he knows how to make a big splash. And, um, you know, people will criticize him on both sides all the time. And uh, but, yeah, I think this I don't I, as far as yeah, like walking ahead. away, like yeah, as far as walking away, though, I think that is just a bad look. That's just um, it just kind of looks like you don't want to have you're not serious about the conversation. Um yeah, for sure. I mean, all you press know. is good press. Okay, maybe that's an argument in a certain sense, depending on what your goal is. Right. You know, if your goal is just pure fame, then fine. I think that that probably is a strategy. Yeah. But if your goal is to become president and you're not willing to have a conversation and you know, debate some basic ideas, then you have yeah. no business running for president. Like, that's literally what a president does is they debate issues and they debate policy. That's the whole job. Yeah. And yeah, and he referenced the Lex Friedman interview. And, and I thought that was interesting because I didn't like Tim really didn't treat it any differently than Lex. Like I, I honestly, the way I look at it is I think he gave Lex a lot more um, leeway as far as asking questions. Oh, dude, and, Lex went after him like five times, you know, exactly. the same thing. And I think that he's probably like, realistically, he is probably just burnt out on it and is tired of talking about it. But then it's like, well, you brought it up. Yeah, you showed up. Right? Like, you showed, you showed up. Not only did you show up, you launched right into, you know, that whole they thing. So to expect that Tim is just going to sit there and not say anything. It's like, you don't, if that's what you want to do, you can find podcasts to do that. Right. But, you know, ultimately Tim ended up, absolutely having the high ground i think he was getting praise from the right people the people who were you know there's some there's some interesting pushback from uh anomaly which 
it was funny because Tim actually went out and like apologized to Anomaly the other day. And so let me just pull this up, what he said. Um, he goes, Uh, where is it? I don't want to scroll through it. Um, he goes, Kanye West brought up the new working definition of anti Semitism that even Trump and DeSantis have passed into law. I'll talk to Kim, Pat, Kim, Kim Cass and Luke Liard Change if we can discuss this topic. Most people in the right wing media. Well, yeah, so he's trying to get on there, but he's sorry, that was not helpful. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to read through his whole. Twitter. I can't find it, but he's yeah. been like pissed at Tim about how he handled it with Kanye. And it's like, I really? Just, you know, yeah, he's been, he was very pissed at Tim. And, Strange. you know, I, typically I, I like a lot of uh, anomaly takes. So I didn't understand why he was so pissed. Well, I, but, I was, I was, yeah, I was going to say, I was hearing that yesterday too. Like before they went live, I heard some people that typically argue for, you know, the free speech argument, not, you know, a little uneasy about that. But um, I think Tim absolutely did. I, you know, the people that thought that way, I'm just like thinking back to the Vijaya interview and, uh, you know, on Joe Rogan um, with Tim, like he's not going to back down. He's, he's going to ask tough questions. Like I had all the faith in the world that he was, you know what I mean? Like he wasn't, he was, right. wasn't going to be puff piece you know um all right cool well i gotta end early today but if you could just go to my page i just want to end on a on a funny note with a meme from rothmas sure um, which i think kanye needs to take more into consideration um oh i'll find you bill right there oh, you already scrolled by scroll oh, by right there there you go um so scroll down and keep going keep going keep going keep going there they are on the plane all right ricky gervais words to live by kanye you found it offensive i found it funny that's why i'm happier than you and it's just like that's the attitude that kanye needs he needs to stop getting so triggered it's like yeah. dude you're Apparently, like I thought you were starting to speak out against all of the political correct stuff, and now you just storm out of any conversation. It's like, get it together. Follow, follow yeah. Ricky Gervais. Triggered, triggered. triggered is the right word. Yeah, it, it, he did mm -hmm. seem triggered. He even used the word woke at one point. Um, yeah, <laughs> so I agree. Cool, man. Um, anything else you want to touch on? Nope. Just uh, check us out later on the week. Uh, we got some cool guests coming up. So, yeah. Thank, thanks, yeah thanks for tuning everyone. in, guys.